So, Jeremy, I'm going to give you this, but hold on. Let me muscle check you first. So arm out for you, whichever one you want me to work with. Ready, resist. Steve, which one do you want me to work with for you? Left, OK. Push up. OK, you always check somebody in neutral first so you know what you're working with. So I want you to read that, Jeremy. OK, so uh, arm out, Steve. Shake your head when you're doing what I told you to do. Ready, resist. Arm out, Jeremy. Keep it going. Still got it going. Same thing. Ready, resist. Okay, next thing you're going to do, Jeremy. Okay. So, Jeremy, shake your head. Arm out, Steve. Shake your head when you're doing what I told you. Ready, resist. Keep it going, Jeremy. Arm out for you. Still got it, Jeremy. Ready, resist. Okay, third thing, Jeremy. Shake it when you have that one going, Jeremy. Got it. Ready, resist. Okay, arm out, Jeremy. Shake it when you got it. Ready, resist. So the first thing that Jeremy did is he thought a negative thought directly about Steve. <laughs> you, you two can talk about this later. Steve's arm went down, and so did Jeremy's. Second thing she, he did is uh, Jeremy thought a very positive thought about Steve. Steve's arm actually went up when I released it. Jeremy's arm stayed up. Third thing Jeremy did is he thought a negative thought unrelated to Steve. Steve's arm stayed up. Jeremy's went down. Ladies and gentlemen, our thoughts transfer. Our thoughts impact who and what we aim them at. Now, this is not license to go out and zap somebody you don't like. <laughs> because when you're thinking a negative thought about them, it's having a negative impact on you. Now, uh, Steve, once you have a seat, Jeremy, you can head back to your chair. Now, this notion of sending thoughts actually shows up in every major religion in the world. It's called prayer. Classic study was published in Southern Medical Journal in 1988. It was by Dr. Randolph Bird from University of California Medical School. In the study, they had 400 coronary care patients. They had them divided into two groups. They received the same exact medical care. It was a double-blind study. Neither doctors, nurses, staff, the, the patients, nobody knew who was being, uh, what was happening. And one group was prayed for by Protestant and Catholic prayer groups spread around the country. The results, the prayed for group had less congestive heart failure, they had five times less need for antibiotics. They had four times less pneumonia. They had four times less need to be resuscitated, brought back to life. Which group would you have rather have been in, in this study? It's called put me in the paid for group, thank you, amen. Now a more recent study was done with AIDS patients. This study was before the cocktail of drugs came about. So in the study, they had 40 patients divided into two groups. One group was prayed for by 10 people. These 10 people 10 came, came from 10 different religious backgrounds, 10 different healing traditions. They prayed for these folks for one hour per day for one week, and then those folks were done. The results, six months later. The controls had spent 68 days in the hospital. The prayed for folks had spent 10 days in the hospital. And the prayed for folks had less severe AIDS-related diseases and less emotional stress. And all people were doing were sending thoughts. By the way, I'll be telling you at the end of the program, where you can go on my website if you want to get all the slides that I'm showing uh, here, so you, because I don't have all of them in handouts. So before I do this slide here, let's bring you back up here, Steve. And um, now let me go to the slide first. So let me go to the slide first. 
So there's been some research on sending thoughts where they had, it was on a college campus. They had two emotionally bonded people. They put them on opposite ends of the campus and they wired them all up with EEG machines and they're also monitoring their brains with an fMRI brain scanner. So one person's brain was stimulated with a laser. The other person's EEG and fMRI scan reacted at the same time at the same place. So that what we're looking at with this notion is that our thoughts are alive in ways that we may not have thought before.